morning all, it's raining, so I'm putting my roof up, it's the morning after the Cherokee failed before, so I'm on the outskirts of Smoky Mountains still, trying to walk around it, run around it, get around it. Now I'm not going anywhere, because it's raining. <laughs> it's actually 9 a.m. now, so no complaints really. I had a good sleep, now I've had to jump out and do the roof. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse than that. I've kind of got my doors shut here and then open at the end with the idea being kind of see out can I kind of see it got a bit of a view and now looking for drips like that drip drips I should be able to catch some of that water I think that corner is dripping most this actually kind of saves me a trip to the river or the store because I could buy like a gallon from the store so I don't have to go back and forward to the river too often the less trips like that the less attention the better last night I got stopped by the curfew officer who came around and said hey are you hiking so I just said, yeah, I just got off the trail, can't go through Cherokee, can't get into Smokies. And he said, well, good luck. But just so you know, there's a curfew. So, can't be out here any longer. So I was like, oh yeah, thanks. I just thanked him for letting me know and then went and hid in the trees, quick. So I'm sure that's how they would round up homeless people, is if they're still around in the night, they're like, hey, you're past curfew. So it's important that I hide right now. Nice trickle of water coming straight off that. Perfect. Okay, goodbye to the green Cherokee woods. Well, the closest we could get to Cherokee anyway. It's starting to rain. I wouldn't usually bother to go anywhere in this rain. I've got everything I need. I've got food. I would have water from the rain. I shouldn't be risking getting my stuff wet, but, but, I have no phone signal, I want to upload the video to you guys, and also I need the phone signal so I can figure out what am I doing next, where am I going, how am I going to do it. This is how I knew this was a good spot, the mailbox is battered, the driveway is clearly just nothing and I found that in about five minutes I was like yep this is home <laughs> so I won't be going far in this rain just far enough to get a phone signal and create a new camp similar to that one hopefully with some water or I can catch the rain but it's not really been raining heavy enough to like really have as much water as I would like. I need water to drink, I need water for food. I use a lot of water, yo. <sighs> Back to roads.
made all this effort to get to the trail. It was fun, but it didn't last long. We have made some decent ground too, while we're looking at maps. Have a look at the map from where we came on the trail. I was gonna call Hagen and say, hey, could you drive me? Could you pick me up? Could you help me get around the roadblock? And I realized Sushi's or DeLonga or whatever, the Walmart where we were at the beginning, where we met Hagen, it's miles away. It's not near here anymore. I keep feeling like, oh, I'm only just up the road from where I left, but I've gone a long way along those mountain peaks. Gone a long, long way. The only cars out here are sheriff cars. That was what just went by then. It's just me in the rain and the sheriffs. <laughs> Great. And that's what it's going to be along the road. It's not going to be happy roads with Golden Corral and Taco Bell. It's going to be everything's closed and it's roads. And there's all kinds of sheriffs and curfews and getting stopped, getting diverted. Okay, I'm gonna run, stay warm. No chance of staying dry, <laughs> but at least I'll be warm and wet. It's only five or 10 miles. Ugh. Then I'll just set up camp again. Wait for this to pass. Pretty though, pretty mountains. Look, look. My phone started blinging, bling, bling, bling. So I think I'm back in the zone to get messages. And I can just hide out under here for now. Pretty good spot. Stay out of view of the road. Don't tell the sheriff. <laughs> and then I can even put my hammock up between a couple of poles. If I have to, I can stay here. Nice view. <laughs> I've done what I intended to do, which is go far enough for my phone to work. Yeah. That's it, So I'm uploading the recent video from this rainy barn. <laughs> Time to kick up the hammock. <laughs> Thank you.
roadblock. Hoping that, that car won't see me because I've hidden myself behind all this shit. I feel like a sniper. Sniping. No, they've gone. See, if it's really obvious. I mean, it's not, not everyone would see a hammock and think that it's a hammock. But I figure with the pallets in the way, no one can see me from the main road. That's where all the cops are on the main road. There's the mountains looking beautiful. Yeah, look, it's a pretty good disguise. I can be pretty certain that no one can really see me. So I've got a pretty beautiful view of the mountain. I'm kicking back here, drying my feet. My feet got wet, soaked in the rain. So drying them out. My shoes are wet. My socks are hanging up there. I made like a washing line. I'm quite enjoying this view. This is just amazing. Look at these mountains. It's so cool. <laughs> I'm looking and thinking about adventures and how to head out. Yo, welcome to my luxury barn diner. Sun's going down, 8 p.m. Avocado and sweet potato mash. This is my new thing. I discovered that there's mash, that sweet potato mash And a bit of avocado in there. Luxury. Loving it. <laughs> Loving it. The rain is going to stop at 9 a.m. So that's perfect. Dun, dun, dun. Barn Ninja. It's a wonder that I slept at all with all these banging, clanging, flapping. But I did. Didn't see me. First bit of activity I've seen is this guy walking by. He keeps stopping randomly and then walking more. Maybe that's part of his thing. I don't think it's anything to do with me. Yeah, I slept really good. I was really happy, really comfortable. I can totally pack up and move now. The rain's gone. So I think I'll do that, but I sh also I should edit a video, so I might just edit chill out but the worst thing I've seen is this walking guy and I don't think he sees me I think he's just walking the most risky um, encounter so far So the reality is, I'm pretty safe here for 
an unforeseen amount of time. The actual owner of the land won't even have a reason to come in the barn unless they want to check on these two machines or do something with the machines, which it doesn't seem the right time of year to do that. There's just nothing else in here. My socks aren't getting very dry. I think I have to wait for a sunny day and I'll just wear some different old smelly socks, but at least they're dry. I'd rather wear dry socks that might be used than wet socks that are clean. I was very, very happy with this. It was an actual hurricane. My phone said, hurricane warning. I was like, yeah, thanks, warn me now. But luckily I intuitively moved to the barn. But it wouldn't have been much fun to be just under the tarp. I would have had to pin that tarp down really tight. And just not move. Whereas in here I can kind of get up, move around, change position, you know. Like I've got more space. A little more space. And the noises in the night didn't even bother me. I didn't wake up. When I woke up in the morning, I was like, oh, cool, it's noisy in here. <laughs> it's funny how I didn't hear it all night. And then once my body's like, okay, we're getting up now. And I was like, oh, the noise. lovely stay. That white jeep arrived. Some people got out and went off walking. Don't know if they would have cared. But they never saw me. Ah, warmth and sunshine again. That was an actual tornado <laughs> or hurricane or whatever. It was a real storm. I had a storm warning on my phone anyway. There are some massive dandelions and plantains here, look. Look at the size of that. It's a shame they're all right by the road. But I've been seeing tons of them all along here, like monster size dandelions and plantains. They would go lovely in some rice or some smoothie. Oh, I need to power my phone. That's another thing. I've run out of power again. Power bank is empty again. So I'm hunting for plugs as a top priority, as usual. <laughs> Back there is a massive, massive reindeer, whatever it's called. Look at the size of it. There's this buddy right there. What's up, reindeer buddies? Looks like a horse. It's a reindeer the size of a horse. Oh yeah, the elk. Is it an elk? Is that what it is? Okay, yeah. that answers that question. So this river is the same river that we crossed on the way into Cherokee. And I did a nice little panning shot of how peaceful it was. So, you can see how much rain we had. I wasn't kidding ya. It was rainy. This is the same spot. Whoop. Okay, here's my log cabin. <laughs> or at least the front deck.
is the power. Let's find out if it works. Yes. on charge, including the blender. This view is lovely. The raging river. Kicking back in my rocking chair. <laughs> mm. And looking at that massive mountain. Look at it. It's like a postcard out here. Alrighty, sleepy bears. I'm so happy. I knew at some point someone's going to come out, so I just spoke to Karen from the office. Karen and Jerry, who own this campground, they said they love what I'm doing and they're totally happy for me to stay for a few hours, charge up the phone, upload the video. So, big shout out. It's called Grumpy Bear Campground, and they've got some cool looking tents down at the back there. I don't think we've seen those yet. Look, proper. Indian teepee styly. So yeah, big thanks, big shout out. And if you're ever in this area, Bryson City or Cherokee, I would definitely recommend Grumpy Bear Campground. It is awesome how they're right here on the river. Although she said this morning there was so much water that it came in and flooded, like that's what all this is. So that's a pretty crazy level of uh, water flow going on but now I can really relax <laughs> and just enjoy kicking back in my rocking chair and uh, not have to feel like I'm not allowed I have official permission there go my friends my sleepy bear grumpy bear friends that was my cabin for the day I had a free cabin rental a grumpy bear campground these guys were amazing. Give them a call, come and visit. Whoa, I almost stepped in that huge puddle. There's been a big flood all along here. That river brushed its banks. So they were asking me, where are you going now? And I'm like, well, I had all these plans to run back to my old high school in North Carolina. I even had plans to go see New York just for the cheesy kind of tourism factor and in my head, I'm making Seb Cam the movie, and it'd be cool to run past Statue of Liberty. But, it seems everything's closed. Even the Grumpy Bear Campground, they've had to close it down. They just don't want people traveling south from New York because of the virus. So it's not safe for me to head into the big city, the Big Apple. So instead of all these detours and diversions and going around and about the way, what if I just do the thing? Let's run to Hollywood, California. I'm already pretty far west. Let's stop messing around. Let's just make a diagonal cut and I'll show you the trail. I found a way to do it off-road. I don't want to be on the roads. So that's what we're doing. I'm having to backtrack a little way. We're going back over the same river. We're going back over some of the same roads and mountains. Back towards the trail. But we're ultimately heading to the ultimate goal. California! <laughs> California. It feels good to just be heading for that goal and just no messing now. No messing around. No side quests. 
Let's just go. Behind the scenes look at everyone's favorite TV series. Seb Cow. <laughs> yeah!